Hey there, and welcome to our intro guide for V-Ray for Cinema 4D. This series is designed to help you get started with the product and start rendering in no time. In this video, I'm going to show you how V-Ray's lights are specifically designed for photorealistic results and optimized for that purpose. We'll be talking about rectangle lights, spherical lights, IES lights, mesh lights, dome lights, and the V-Ray sun and sky system. Take a second to grab our project files from the link in the video description. This way, you can follow along at your own pace. Now, let's dive in. You can find the lights in two places, either in the main V-Ray menu or from the V-Ray toolbar. All the lights are colored yellow and grouped together so you can find them easily. Let's go through the different types. First up is the rectangle light. This is a simple yet very useful light source for artificial lights. Think of everything from street lamps to photography soft box lights. You can change the color of the light or the temperature Next, you can decide how bright the light is by changing the intensity value. You can also decide the shape of the light. It could be rectangular or a disc shape. And you can adjust the size with the width and height values. There's a slider called directional that you can use to make the light focus in a certain direction. Focusing it will also make it more pronounced, so we might need to tone its intensity down. You can also make the light invisible, which can be really useful in certain situations. Okay, here are two rectangle lights I prepared earlier using the same approach. Next, let's take a look at the spherical light. You'll see it has a lot of the same settings as the rectangular light, like color, intensity, and size. Most V-Ray lights have the same basic settings, but they also have some unique ones. For the spherical light, one of these is the sphere segment's value. Let's move on to the IES light. This one's a bit different. The first thing you will notice is that it needs a file input. The IES file is usually supplied by the lighting manufacturers. This file contains the data for the real-life distribution of that specific light meaning you will have an interesting light profile and intensity predefined for you once you load the IES file. If the power value is left at zero, then the light will be as bright as it's supposed to be according to the file, but you can always change this if you need to. There are also options to override the prescribed power and rescale the max intensity which are just different ways to control how bright the light is. Next up is the mesh light. It has many of the same settings as the other lights, but what's different about this one is that it requires geometry in order to work. You just choose an object to be the light source and attach it to the mesh light. It's that simple. you'll already recognize the other options from the previous lights. Now let's switch gears a bit and look at the dome light. Add a new dome from the toolbar. This one's a bit different, 
It's like a giant sphere that surrounds your whole scene and emits light from all directions. It can be used with a 360 degree texture that acts as the light source. Without a texture, the dome light just emits a single color. But let's see what happens when we add a texture. We could navigate to a folder with our own HDRI textures, but the easiest way to find one while you are still deciding on the overall mood of the shot is Chaos Cosmos. We simply need to choose an image from the HDRI category And once imported, it will automatically create a new dome light with the proper name and the texture already loaded in it. If we start to rotate the dome light using its heading value, we will rotate the HDRI texture and get different lighting depending on the rotation value. Here are a few more examples using different HDRI maps from Chaos Cosmos. Last but not least, let's take a look at the sun and sky system. This is the easiest way to get natural lighting in your scene. If you move the sun around, you'll notice the lighting changes too. If you put the sun close to the horizon, you'll get colors like you see at sunrise or sunset. The sunlight has settings like intensity and color that you'll recognize, but it also has a size value. This controls how sharp or soft the shadows are. A larger value means softer shadows. You can also choose different sky models for different sky colors. Next, let's go to the Clouds tab. If you enable this, V-Ray will make a cloud system that the sun and skylights affect. With the settings here, you can control how the clouds look. For example, with the density setting, a higher value means more clouds, and a lower value means a clear sky. Before we finish, here's a bonus tip. Check out the V-Ray Light Lister. While Cinema 4D's Object Manager and Layering System gives us great flexibility, often we need to parent lights deep into our hierarchy, and finding them might get a bit tedious. With this useful list, we have a bird's eye view of our complete lighting, and we can select and change whichever light we might need without looking for it in the Object Manager. By now, you should know how V-Ray lights work in Cinema 4D. You should be able to create a lot of different moods with your lighting, especially with the HDRI maps from Chaos Cosmos. Check out the rest of our videos in this series and our blog and documentation for more tips and tricks. See you soon!